Humans are surrounded by electrical devices every day. Electrical power lines crisscross the nation. These power lines give off electrical and magnetic fields. According to Hydro One's EMF position statement, there is not enough scientific evidence that these fields are harmful. But there is growing concern and even more mounting evidence that these fields are in fact harmful. I'm your host, Tristan Vasquez, and we'll be taking a deeper look at what is being called electrical pollution. But my definition of electrical pollution would be any, any sort of uh, high frequency energy or electrical noise or something like that that rides on the normal 60 or 50 cycle sign. Our electrical wires use 60 hertz. Riding on top of that current are high electrical radio frequencies, also known as dirty electricity. These electrical radio frequencies come from electronic equipment that was designed to be more energy efficient after the oil embargo in 1972. This electronic equipment uses pulses instead of continuous energy flow and sends electrical radio frequencies back onto the power lines. These power lines are not designed to handle these frequencies and as a result these radio frequencies leak into our environment. It turns out that um, a lot of the utilities now in North America, because of the way that we're using uh, electricity and because of the high frequencies that are, are generated on wires that were never designed to carry them, we're getting a lot of unbalanced um, currents, unbalanced loads on the wires. The wire's overloaded. What happens to that current? We have to do something with it. So the electric utilities chose to put it in the ground. But history said that when we had current running across the ground, it caused animals and people to get sick. And that's in the National Electrical Safety Code Handbook. Okay, so now we have this high frequency riding across the ground. Not in the ground, but on top of the ground. So where do you stand? Where does uh, your animals stand? On top of the ground. Where are your water pipes? In the ground. So the human body is like a capacitor and a resistor if you were going to make it into an electrical model. A capacitor is a short to high frequency. So this current, instead of when it runs across the ground, it goes right up one leg and down the other. It oscillates into the human body. It couples right in. In the handbook for the assessment and management of magnetic fields caused by distribution lines, EPRI, Electrical Power Research Institute, states, furthermore, proximity to distribution lines has been associated with the risk of childhood cancer in three epidemiological studies. Um, this is a problem that's been with us since at least the 1970s. If anything, it's, it's getting much, much worse. And it was first noticed on farms, particularly dairy farms. Um, and I think one of the reasons um, that, that the, dairy, the, the dairy cow has become equivalent to the canary in the coal mine that you know, told us that there were noxious gases and, and people had to get out, um, is that the cows are in constant contact with ground. And that's indeed what farmers have been noticing, is that in areas where there's a lot of ground current, um, their cattle simply aren't producing as much milk as in other regions. Um, they often have foot sores. Um, they often have other problems um, that they can't um, cure with antibiotics. So these animals have a lot of symptoms um, that's been attributed back to the um, uh, ground current that's flowing. Uh. The average life of a cow, is, when I grew up, was anywhere from 10 to 14 years. Now the average life of a cow is 2 to 4 years. It's, that's what EMF and um, microwaves and cell phones are doing to the lifespan of a cow. The pituitary gland that produces the hormones for them in the body is totally blocked. Like it can't produce effectively the melatonin well, not melatonin, oxytocin for the cow to let her milk down. So she never lets the milk down. It takes so long, so the machines are on a lot longer than they should be. And that <clears throat> gives a, um, aggravation on the teats where, and of course, EMF 
stimulate the production of E. coli, staph, and strep. So they're getting in there and creating a lot of infections in the cow. Ground current affects four main areas relating to cows, milking performance and behavior, herd health, nutritional intake, and yield of product. Commonly cited cow responses to electrical shock. One, intermittent periods of reduced production. Two, increased incidence of mastitis. Three, elevated somatic cell count in milk samples. Four, lengthened milking times. Five, incomplete milking letdown. Six, extreme nervousness in entering milking parlor. Seven, reluctance to enter the milking parlor. Eight, reluctance to use water bowls or metallic feeders. Nine, altered consumatory behavior such as lapping water or splashing rather than normal drinking behavior. The structure of water makes the water molecules bigger. It gives it a metallic taste so the animals don't like drinking the water. They lap the bowls and, and they just don't get enough water into the body. So they neutra neutralize those minerals so they can't be absorbed into the body. <clears throat> In pigs it creates um, very aggressive animals where they become really aggressive and, and bite the tails and ears. And Notice in this footage here how the horses lift their hooves whenever there is an electrical spike in the screen above. Many horses and cows affected by electrical ground current are showing what is being called microwave burns. This is the ground Stetzer microsearch meter. This detects the amount of radio frequencies per second in the surrounding environment. Right now it is around uh, 210 to 225 uh, radio frequencies per second, also known as GS units or gram stetzer units on this. And the safe limit is 30. As you can see, we're already above that. Anyways, we're going to turn on the TV. Uh, which is a high electrical polluter, and watch the uh, electrical field go up. So, and now we're going to install these uh, Stetzer, Gram Stetzer uh, filters, uh, which filter out the EMF field. As you can see, it's dropped significantly from the 1,000 range to um, this range. It's still over uh, the same limit, but it's much better. So, yeah. It's the subway. Thousands of Torontonians use the subway every day. This is the amount of electrical pollution in the subway. As you can see, it's about 19,000 to over 2,000 GS units. Now we're going to take some readings of other areas in York University. This is the Environmental Studies Building. We're right now in the lounge, and here is uh, what the reading uh, for this uh, area. It's about 140 to 150 uh, GS units. This is the library. Thousands of students use York University's library. Here you can see the amount of electrical pollution from one of the computers at York University. This is what the meter looks like when the field is over 2,000 GS units. Now to the third floor. Still over 30, the safe limit. Now we head back and out into the world.